So in this video presentation, we're gonna carry out the insulation resistance test. Well, not of one circuit, as we've done many times before, Joe, we're actually gonna do the whole installation. Is that correct, Joe? Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of our previous videos have focused on carrying out insulation resistance testing on a single circuit. Yeah. But what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna carry out the insulation resistance test on the entire installation. Obviously, this is a mimicked installation that we've installed here in the college, uh, but it'll serve our purposes really well. So if we were doing this in the real world, Gaz, what tests would we have carried out so far? So we were first of all, we're gonna to have to prove that the circuit is isolated. So we did the safe isolation procedure and you can see that it's already been locked off. So that would have been proved. And then we go on and do test number one, which would be continuity of the green and yellow conductors we've been saying, but it's really continuity of CPC, including uh, the protective bonding conductor. So yeah. things like to the water and gas pipes, etc. Yeah. So we do the continuity of those conductors. We follow it with uh, the continuity of ring final circuit conductors. We do, and we should have included in polarity at the same time we did the yep. first test, which we, we do in all our video presentations. Yep. And so now we're at test number three, which is our insulation resistance test. Absolutely. We've done a few things during the continuity test to ensure that our circuits are all ready for that test. What have we done, Joe? So what we've done is we've made sure that we've got all of our switches in the on position. So that makes sure that we test every single last piece of conductor and the insulation covering it. We're gonna do things like make sure that we remove loads so that we don't get any false readings. And a critically important point, Gaz. Yeah, so what we've been seeing in, in test rigs as they've developed them on is that they've been putting other electronic components in that can be damaged by this high voltage test. So things like smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors. So we've got to make sure that we actually separate them from the base. So we remove them from the base so we can actually carry out this test. That's quite crucial, I think. Yeah, absolutely. We want to make sure that we've got as many uh, covers on as much accessories as we possibly can. Obviously, we've mentioned removing uh, the lid off the smoke detector. That's just something we've got to do to protect the smoke detector. Uh, but generally speaking, if an electrician's gonna create a fault in his own work, it's when he screws a cover back. That's when cables get pinched and insulation resistance faults are likely to occur. So we get as much screwed back as we can. Uh, it's not always possible to have everything screwed back, but as much as possible. Also, another little one that we, we like to do is make sure the socket outlets have been left also mm. in the on position. The insulation resistance test gets right to the front of those. Yeah. We've also got two-way switching, and we're going to address that yeah. um, as AM2 and AM2S would expect us to do yeah. when we're testing with two-way or two-way and intermediate switching. So we're going to bring the camera in. We're going to show you how we're going to set up our tester, yep. and we're going to carry out this insulation resistance test. Let's do it. Okay, so we've got our mega MFT, and we're going to carry out the insulation resistance test, meaning that we must use the red and green terminating points in the top of the mega MFT, ignoring the blue one because it's not a live test. Mm -hmm. We've got this special lead here, Joe, which allows us to piggyback two leads together. So this one here will allow us to piggyback them together because BS 767 requires what? It requires that we carry out an insulation resistance test between live uh, live conductors to earth so that's conductors plural okay so that means line and neutral together yeah. to earth yeah. okay so this lead will allow us to do that so let's put that one in then so we're going to use the red one it doesn't matter if we use the red or the green but logic says we always push it into the red one and we piggyback our other lead in so effectively then those are together great yeah. yeah they're essentially they're one one connection aren't they one cable yep. so if we put one on the neutral bar and one on the line conductor they yep. will be together and we need to test that too uh, we need to test that to the earth bar so that we're testing to all the cpcs brilliant so let's get that and let's put that one in so if we probe that one into there okay there go. okay what we're gonna do now joe is actually prove that we've actually got this connected to these two leads. Sure. So if you set us up for insulation resistance. Fantastic, so we're gonna turn it to the mega ohms range and because we're testing a 230 volt circuit, the S7671 requires that we set it to 500 volts. Brilliant, so if I take the green and red lead and short them together, mm -hmm. so let's see what we get there. So you can see there we're getting zero mega ohms gas, which means that those two uh, leads are making a connection to each other, which is what we want to see at this point. Okay, so let's prove also that we go to the blue lead. So we'll test that again. And once again, you can see we're getting zero mega ohms, which means we know that those two leads are connected to each other. So when we probe those onto our live conductors and this on the earth bar, we will actually be doing the test required by BS7671. Absolutely. So let's bring the camera in, and we're going to start off by doing live conductors to earth first. Let's do it. So let's just have a look, quick look at the consumer's unit. The main switch is in the off position. This is a linked main switch or a double pole switch. We have one circuit, which is a sub-main circuit with an earth metallic sheath that goes off to a distribution board simulated in a garage. We have an RCCB protecting one, two circuits with the center one being not used. Remembering these contain electronic components and therefore need to be left in the off position, as are the circuit breakers because the voltage will go both out and down 
we won't want to pass it through the bottom of the RCCB. And then a final RCCB protecting two circuits. First of all, we're going to carry out the live conductors to earth test. So we'll clip onto the first of the three neutral bars and onto the earth bar. Remembering it doesn't matter whereabouts I connect onto these bars as long as I've connected onto them. And we'll test circuit number one. So press and hold the test button. Got a reading greater than the machine can read, greater than 999. We release the button before releasing the probe. We move to the next circuit here, but we must remember to remove our clip across to the next neutral bar. So we move that across. I'll have a problem probably connecting this one. As always, there we go. And on we go and press and hold the test button. Again, the same reading as before. We let go of the test button. We move the probe across and we go again. All of these readings are greater than the requirement for a brand new installation. And the guidance notes three for a brand new installation, the installation resistance test must be greater than 20 mega ohms. For uh, an existing installation, uh, further investigation at two mega ohms and the smallest acceptable value of insulation resistance being one mega ohm. Remembering this is a brand new circuit, we're expecting a fantastically high reading. Whoops, off it comes. And we're up. Okay, final set of two. Again, greater than 999. Let go of the button, move across to the next one. And again, greater than 999 mega ohms. This allows us now to record in the box heading for insulation resistance live conductors, line and neutral together to earth. So that insulation resistance test readings can be recorded. Let's move on to do between live conductors. So I've changed it back to a more conventional layout. So we've got two leads in now in our red and green sections. I've made them red and blue because we're gonna be testing between the line and neutral, but it wouldn't matter which color leads that you did use and it wouldn't matter which of the two holes you used as well. Position this back a little bit so we can see the screen. And we're gonna now test between live conductors. So I've gone to the first neutral bar, which I always find struggle on, on camera to get connected and test between line and neutral. Okay, fantastic, greater than the machine can read again, greater than 999 mega ohms. Move across to the next neutral bar, and we'll jog our way along. Try and, yeah, try and let go of the button before removing the probe. It was a bit quick there for, for Joe as I moved across. So we go again, so probe on, compress it for us, Joe. Okay, there go. Okay, and again. And we can see all those readings are greater than 999 mega ohms. We're not quite finished. We've still got to take into consideration two-way and two-way and intermediate switching. We're going to do that in a separate video presentation where we talk about the need to go out into installations and operate those switches. That'll be a separate video focusing on that just because of time constraints. This video we wanted to concentrate on linking together live conductors and testing them to earth and then testing between live conductors. So that video, we're really playing devil's advocate, aren't we? Mm. Because we know and ourselves that we do the insulation resistance test actually three times. Yeah. However, BS 7671 only allows us to record how many of the readings? So we need to record two of the readings in the uh, documentation. Yeah. And the, it's the live conductors to earth. I shot a video before I made up a lead to do it. A student brought this one in so we can piggyback the leads. Mm. It's easy. Yeah, absolutely yeah. easy to yeah. carry out live conductors to connected together to earth yep. and allow us to record that reading exactly as BS7671 requires us to do it. There's some bits that we hadn't done in this video. What didn't we do, Joe? Yeah, so we didn't look at uh, operating the two-way switching to make sure that we've insulation resistance tested every single scrap of cable. But that's such an important issue and something that we want to cover in detail in another video because there's implications for doing that in the real world when yeah. we're doing our testing and also implications for when we're doing our AM2 or AM2S test as well. So we need to look at that in a bit more detail. Yeah, so we're going to make a separate video presentation where we go through what's expected in guidance notes three yeah. for carrying out the insulation resistance test where there's either two-way or two-way and yeah. intermediate switching. So this video presentation was all about showing you how simple it would be to have a modified lead in order to carry out live conductors to connected together to earth in order to carry out insulation resistance. So I hope this, this video, video has, has been, been some help. help.